Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be telling you guys how the month of March went for me. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start out saying I am very, very proud and happy with how much I read in March. I did really good, especially considering the fact that I was sick most of the month of March. So go me. I believe I read eight books this month which is the most I've read so far this year. I think January and February were both five books each. So I was so excited. I'm also very glad that in the moving process, I decided to pick quite a few shorter books because with getting sick multiple times this month, I wouldn't have been able to read very much at all if I didn't have those shorter books. So I'm very glad I thought to do that ahead of time. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get into it and I'm gonna start out with the book that I started the month off with. So the first book that I started this month off with was Spy Family. This is a manga. This was volume one starting this off. Uh, this is about a spy. I think his name's Twilight. Um, basically, Mary's an assassin, which she doesn't know she's an assassin and she doesn't know that he's a spy. Um, because he's got to make this pretend family and then he gets this little girl who's a telepath and he also doesn't know she's a telepath. Mom doesn't know she's a telepath, but she knows that they're both a spy and assassin because she's a telepath. <laughs> so this was so much fun guys. So much fun. This was just a mix of comedy, lightheartedness, and then like the typical manga action wonderful. I loved it. I actually gave this a five stars and I'm very excited to continue on. I've series. heard some stuff comes up later in the series that's kind of conflicting for some people. I'm just gonna have to see when I get to that part but I enjoyed this first book and I'm really excited to go pick up the, the second manga so thank you. Shout out to my best friend for recommending this to me and making me buy it. You were right. <laughs> So yes, oh, I have, I have a quote. I write down um, my favorite quotes in my reading journal, which that is one part that I absolutely love about this reading journal, I love quotes. And my favorite quote in this was, transparency is essential in government. Two pays are a no-go. If you know, you know. Two pays, man. <laughs> So that was the first book of the month for me. Starting out with a five star, I started out awesome, am I right? All right, in the second book of the month, it was while traveling. The first three were almost entirely while traveling, but the second one I did during like the wee hours of the morning or night when we were traveling. And so it was a digital free ebook that I found and it was called Never Ever Getting Back Together by Phoebe McLeod, I think. I'll put a picture or whatnot there. This book was not for me. This was definitely not for me. I want to say I gave it one star. I think I gave it one star. Uh, this was a closed door. Technically, there was a lot of before and after the act that was in it that I did not prefer though. Um, there was just sex in general was talked about it quite a bit. I believe there was some cussing in this. Um, and yeah, the whole story basically centered around um, a one night stand with a douche in high school. And then that douche in high school coming back and being like, oh yeah, but I'm not really a douche. And it just, it didn't seem realistic. It seemed like a really far fetch, like really far fetch type of like, oh, that's a stretch um, story. I didn't like it. The very end was probably what I liked the most, a cute little, oh, this is so romantic moment, but it didn't feel like the characters. It didn't feel like the story throughout the entire thing. Um, pornography was also talked about in this and it was talked about as if it was a normal and healthy thing, which is very disturbing to me. I mean, there are countless, countless studies proving you wrong. So that was, it was not an enjoyable read. I do not recommend this for anyone. Uh, if that is your forte, you know, go for it. But I mean, I think most people who watch me, it's probably not your forte. Um, so yeah, don't, wouldn't recommend checking this out, but technically it didn't, it was technically closed doors. It didn't show anything, but there's a lot surrounding it. A lot of talk about it. A lot of before and after was not the book for me. So yeah. 
I, I wish I was better at DNF in books, honestly. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying so hard to get better at that, but I have such a hard time. If I get a certain, a certain way through it, then I'm just like, I have to push on now. I'm already like halfway. I'm already, you know, so if anybody has any tips on how to better DNF a book or how to, you know, help yourself, uh, please leave them down below because I'd love to hear them because I don't like suffering through books, but I also have a really hard time not finishing a book. <laughs> that's, that's how you know I really, really didn't like a book is when I can't finish it, so. Okay, so obviously we went from a five star starting in the month out really good to a really bad book. And I was like, okay, I need a good romance this time. Now I brought, I brought a good, a good romance with me. I brought Not Since You by Dulce Dameron. This is a Christian contemporary romance, I believe. And guys, I loved this. This was so good. I was not expecting this. <sighs> I was expecting it to be okay. I was expecting a little bit of faith content, you know, but this actually had a lot more faith content in it than I thought it was going to have, for one. The overarching um, message of this book was forgiveness, and I think it was done really, really well. Everything just seems so realistic. It's set in a nice small town in Ohio. I'm from a small town, not from Ohio, but it gave the small town vibes. It did everything you would want a romance book to do. Now, for me, five stars, I just, I really got to feel it. And this got so close. This got so close. I believe I gave this either a 4.5 or 4.75. It was just not quite there, but it was so good. And it was so refreshing. And it's definitely made me so much more excited to dive more into the Christian romance um, genre in general. I'm like so excited now that this was so good. Oh gosh, there is a little bit of mystery aspect in this. It was done very nicely. A lot of times with the mystery aspects, I feel like it's blown out of proportion and it's something crazy or un, you know, just like unrealistic. This was like just very simple, very realistic mystery. And it wasn't like overarching, like this is the entire point of the book either. It was done very well. I enjoyed her writing. I enjoyed the characters, the storyline, the romance between the characters. Um, trigger warning, there is um, some sexual harassment in this book. Um, and there is one like physically assaulting alluring to sexual assault. It does not happen. Um, you guys kind of like threatens, you know, like threatens her. And um, yeah, at one point. So there is that if you have problems with that. I think she did a very good job of writing it. It was done very realistically, but very, um, very polished. I think it wasn't like disturbingly creepy or super descriptive or anything. I think it was done very polished and nice um, for what it was. And just so many themes in this book. I really loved it. I really, really loved it. I would definitely recommend it. This is one in a uh, standalone series, the Secrets of River Hollow novel. So the Secrets of River Hollow series. Um, so I, I'm wanting to get my hands on more from this series because I really, really did enjoy this. Um, but Christian contemporary, so no, no sex, no spice, whatever you want to call it, nothing like that at all. It was very, very good, very well written. So we, we, we went back up, man. We went back up. We didn't quite get a five, but we went back up after that terrible book. And ugh, I'm so happy we did. <laughs> all right, and then the fourth book of the month that I read is Messenger. This is by uh, Lois Lowry. Uh, this is a companion to The Giver. Uh, I believe this is a quartet series, which I thought it was just three, but it's a quartet. <laughs> so there's one more in the series. I'm not going to say too much about this book because it is the third in the series and you really got to know context. Um, but this was good. Uh, I want to say I give this a 3.5, 3.75 maybe. I enjoyed this one more than the second one. This one really started to tie in the first and the second one together because the second one was kind of 
completely apart from the first one. And I was a little bit confused. I was like, oh, are we just gonna hear completely different stories from just set in this world? Um, but this one's starting to tie things together and I really liked how it did it. I was a little conflicted with the ending. I liked it, but I was also a little conflicted over it. But yeah, overall, it was a pretty good book, so. Okay, and then the fifth book I read was The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. Uh, this is a play that he wrote, and this was interesting. Uh, very, very short little thing about right over 100 pages. This is basically about like two friends who have a imaginary friend. Like if you get my drift, like they, they have a man, like um, the one guy, his man is Ernest. And he like pretends to be this person sometimes, but he's not really real. <laughs> It's interesting um and him and the other friend who have both two different imaginary friends are also trying to get with these two women who think they're the other people it's it's interesting it's a comedic a comedic play a short sweet um I would describe it as kind of like nonsense you know like just like lighthearted funny nonsense not my particular um type of nonsense so I didn't like love it I think I gave it just a solid three stars it wasn't anything amazing to me though so but if you're in plays or you're just you know interested then it's not like it's a bad read at all so yeah okay the sixth book of the month of March for me was Dungeons and Drama this is by Christy Boyce uh, this is basically a D&D slash theater rom-com, YA rom-com. Uh, so basically, uh, I don't know how much I want to tell of this it's D, D theater, but I had a problem with the beginning of this book. Oh my goodness. Basically, she, our main protagonist, she does something very bad and her parents think it's appropriate to punish her for doing this insanely, like, bad thing by just making her work at her dad's gaming store um the lack of like common sense parenting in this really hurt me to read <laughs> honestly i was started it and i was like oh no i'm gonna hate this because this is already driving me crazy um but i actually ended up liking it okay once we got past that and it actually got into the main plot I started to enjoy it a bit more. Um, I want to say I gave this 3.5 also. Just a good, solid, fun read. Um, my husband, when I met him, was a big D&D nerd. Still does, but doesn't have as much time for it now. And I grew up a big theater nerd. Um, so, yeah. It was, it was really fun to read and to just, like, have the theater parts. And that was just so much fun to read and interact with and be like, oh, yes this I know this and then even the D&D parts the D&D parts were so much fun when they were acting out the game it was so much fun to read I just uh, I loved it I really did enjoy it. it it made me like think back to when me and my husband were just dating it was really cute in that aspect but it is why <laughs> so some of it is a little bit unrealistic nonsensical not very good parenting there were definitely some things I didn't love about it um but it was fun. It was lighthearted. It's still a 3.5. Um, I will say this is YA, so no sexual content, kissing only. It does have a gay side character, and that gay side character does have a significant other, um, and they are shown in it a couple of times, so I kind of just skimmed and whatevered over. If that's something you don't want, just beware. Um, so yeah, not too not too shabby. Also, I just, I just love this cover. It is so cute. I don't think she ever wears this outfit in the book, though, because I was looking for it the whole time. I don't remember finding it. So, all right, and then the, oh, seventh, the seventh, <laughs> the seventh book of the month of March was my BFF's book club pick for this month, and that was The Ruins of Gorland. Uh, the Ranger's Apprentice book one by John Flanagan. Wow, guys, I got way more into this book than I thought I was going to get. Like, this book was good. This is a middle grade um, fantasy-esque novel about Will, 
who becomes a ranger's apprentice. You also get to follow a little double POV in this from one of his um, ward like housemates earlier in the book named Horace and he's apprenticing at a battle school. Um, it's just really cool. The budding friendship that happens and the bromance that happens between Will and Horace, I was living for it. I was like, oh, this is so great. I think Halt, the um, the ranger that he's apprenticed to, was my favorite character by far. And I believe there's six or seven of these books. So I'm very excited to continue on. This book just, it really grabbed me quicker than I thought it was going to. I got so much more invested. It was very well written. The characters were well written. The characters had a lot of development, even just in this first book. Like I'm really excited to see where the author goes with all this. And let me just say, those last few chapters, guys, I was on the edge of my seat. I was like speed reading through it. I had to know what was gonna happen. It was, oh my goodness, that those last few chapters were so well done. Oh gosh. So thank you so much, Bestie, for putting this on our BFF book club for this year. I'm so glad I read it and I'm so excited to continue on with the series. So, oh, I think I rated this one a four stars, a solid four stars. I really enjoyed it. So, okay. And the eighth and final book that I read this month was Three Gates of Splendor by Elizabeth Elliot. Now this was actually... <laughs> February's book club of the month for my women's nonfiction book club and I didn't finish it in February and I finished it this month March ducked out and didn't get my March book done but I am determined to get back on track this month uh so you know hold me to it guys but this one was amazing guys okay so I thought when I put this on my February TBR I thought which oh god that was so long ago now. I thought this was about like Elizabeth Elliot's story about the after fact. This was not. This is actually the five men who lost their lives to the savage um, Indians in Ecuador. Their story. Uh, this was amazing. Elizabeth Elliot tells the story. She put together all the pieces and there is a little bit of a um, epilogue afterward of some of what she did. I believe she has other books of just her stuff though which I would love to read but this was amazing um the first the first few chapters is kind of like backstory a little bit on Jim and it has a lot of Jim's journal writings and stuff strewn in wow Jim Elliot that man there were so many I was highlighting so much stuff um just the way this came together this was so rich in so many aspects I will say I had a hard time reading through the middle part a little bit the part that was going through the day-to-day -day of just the missionary live out in the jungle um and that that's just you know because it's just nitty-gritty day-to-day stuff somebody who's a little bit more into missions in that type of mission field in particular would probably be a lot more interested and not bored at all by it but even despite that i still rated this a four stars it was still an amazing book and i would definitely recommend it to anyone and everyone but if you're not like crazy into that, I would just give a fair warning that the middle of the book can be a little bit slower paced because of that. So, so yeah, these are all the books and the one ebook that I didn't like and would rather not have on here, but these are all the books that I read in the month of March. Oh my gosh, guys, it's no longer March. We're in April. I'm like so excited. This was a great reading month for me, despite the fact that I was sick most of the month. Honestly, oh gosh, I would love to hear um, if it was a good month for you. I hope it was. If not, I really hope April, you just like kill it. I hope you kill April. I hope I kill April. I'm so excited. Spring is coming. I'm just, I'm so ready. I'm so ready for all the spring weather, the flowers, the plants growing. Just, oh, I'm so excited and so ready. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your week. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.